Greetings. Welcome to Linda's Real Deal Talk Show. Hold on to your seats. We have an amazing artist here with us today. The title of our show is Finding Your Creative Side or Style. And our guest, her name is Janine Carter, and she will inspire you to pull out that creative side that you've been desiring for years. So let's give a big warm welcome for Janine Carter. Janine, thank you so much for joining us here today on Linda's Real Deal Talk Show. I would like to start off by asking you to give us a little background history on how do you, how and why did you get started with your art? Well, Linda, I am so excited to be here today and thank you for inviting me. I have known, well, I am Janine Carter, also known as R.C. Janine, okay. which is my art name. Yeah. Um, I have known since I was a young child that I wanted to be an artist. So when I was four years old, um, anyone that asked me, even at that age, as early as four, um, what do you want to be? I would tell them without hesitation, I'm going to be an artist. And so any spare time that I had, um, I would be drawing or painting. I'd be in my room drawing and painting. So I, in fact, won my first art contest when I was six years old. Wow. And then I won some art contests also in high school. I was voted um, best artist and got a plaque, which still, I believe, hangs at Van Horn High School in okay. Independence. Um, and then I went on from there to pursue my art education at the University of Missouri in Kansas City. But my passion was always for my art. And okay. so um, I just knew I needed to go back to school. I needed to finish um, what I'd started. I needed to finish my art degree. I wouldn't be happy with anything else. So I re-enrolled in school um, around 1997. And um, within two years, December of 1999, I actually completed my bachelor's of art in studio art. And so I was very excited. I was also a newlywed at the same time that summer I'd gotten married. So my husband and I, at the time, uh, we lived in the Plaza area and um, very close to the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. And I was um, hired at the Nelson Atkins to work part time as a classroom assistant in what was the Creative Learning Center at the time. And I was so thrilled. So um, I worked there, I loved it. I was close enough to the art gallery where we lived um, that I could walk, and so I would walk to work. Um, but I loved that job so much. Within a year, they promoted me to um, a part-time art teacher in the classroom. So I worked at the Nelson from about 2000 until 2013. So um, that at that time, uh, my husband and I had two preschool children. I did um, step back from that um, because doing after school programs and trying to raise a family with young children was very challenging. So I, I stepped back from that and um, just took a break. Uh, but I'm so glad I had that time because during that time I met some really incredible artists um, I was able to um, just learn a lot there, just about, I had a staff of about 12 people that I oversaw nice. that worked um, in the community programs um, okay. classes. Um, I also was able to coordinate the scholarship program for youth for the museum art classes. So I learned a lot. And during that time, somehow I got connected with an artist group um, called The Light in the Other Room, which was a group Ooh. of African-American artists from the Kansas City area. And that was the first time I got to be part of a professional artist group. So it really gave me a lot of opportunity to start exhibiting my work, and it inspired me 
to be painting, to be drawing. Well, speaking of your doodling, yes. yeah, I am so excited. Now, I'm so curious, I wanted to see some of your artwork. Did you bring any pieces with you? I did, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get around too, because I have to tell the story about how the how piece you... that I brought, and I brought some additional things to show as well. How, what, what was the inspiration for it? So Janine, thank you so much for bringing your artwork. Could you please explain to us your artwork? Yes, and I would like to also be able to tell you um, what was the inspiration for this. Um, this is called Along Came a Dove, and it is acrylic painting um, on canvas. Um, the inspiration for this came about um, last winter. Um, I, during pandemic, when pandemic hit, I realized, I didn't realize until then, because uh, my health started really taking a downturn. And um, I, I didn't realize that until that time that I hadn't dealt with the grief from my husband passing. My, one of my sisters told me, you know what's your problem? You didn't deal with your grief. So I began the long, painful journey, but worth it, of dealing with that and doing therapy about that. And after I came out of that, I felt like I'd been resurrected. I really did. I felt like, wow, now's the time. And all the things I had been wanting to do about doing my art full time, it was really on my heart now. But I still needed to, you know, kind of get out there. So this painting came about because <laughs> one day in December, and I think it was around December 1st or 2nd, actually. I saw a white dove. I went out that morning and there was a white dove in my driveway. I do feed the birds, but mm -hmm. I put birds here and there, but I had never seen a white mm -hmm. dove. Mm -hmm. I call myself a semi-bird watcher. <laughs> never seen a white dove in our area. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's this white dove. And he was walking around, kind of hung out with me, didn't seem afraid, didn't fly away. And I thought, why does, okay. And immediately I thought, Lord, what are you saying to me? I felt like it was a message from God because anytime in the Bible you'd hear of or see a white dove, it was the Holy Spirit, it was something good. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, Lord, what is it? And I thought, I'm gonna take a picture of this. So, in fact, on my, my personal Facebook page, I have pictures from all three days because this same dove appeared two more days in a row. The second day it was sitting on my house when I went outside and it came down and it was there. The third day the dove was there and it seemed like it would hang out for about an hour. But anyway, um, this painting, I took the picture of the dove on the first day I saw it and I shared with my best friend Benita. Benita, I saw this white dove and told her the story. She said, you should paint it. I said, I was thinking of the same thing. And so that's where this painting came from. Now it was kind of a couple days process. Um, I do like experimenting with paint and different processes and tools and materials. So I thought I'm gonna do a little bit of printmaking. And so some of the processes you see here are printmaking processes. Um, some of them are just interesting tools that I used. I didn't use a paintbrush on some of this. Some of it is just things I use like tools, like scrapers. Some of it I just, I took the brush and I threw some paint. I did a lot of different things on this one. And the image of the dove is actually, um, was painted onto another surface and transferred to the canvas. So, um, I just really had a lot of fun. And this was all part of what I felt like God was just resurrecting me from that time I had went through during the pandemic of depression. I felt like he was telling me, it's time to do your artwork full time. It's mm -hmm. time. I had been wanting to do that. And so from there, ever since I painted this painting, <laughs> I have really worked hard to spend as much time as I possibly can every week in my studio. Um, so I try to get some time, uh, if it's not every day, most days out of the week where I'm at least drawing, painting, or doing something. And because of that, I have been able to, I've joined another artist group, 
I have had the opportunity to exhibit my work in the Crossroads Art District, um, at least on two separate occasions. I've had my first solo art exhibition at the Mid-Continent Public Library, Raytown Branch. It was great. Um, so, and I've been able to put up my art tent <laughs> and been able to um, show my paintings. I also now have um, my website up. I have a red bubble shop where anyone can purchase uh, my images that are there on mugs. They can purchase them on housewares, different items. And I did bring some of those that I'd like to show you to today. Um, so I, I've just been having a great time and I feel really blessed to be able to do this full time. So Janine, tell us how long did it take you to create each one of the pictures and just the process involved in creating everything that you're displaying here today? Well, thank you for asking, Linda. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to tell you. Um, a lot of times when I go into um, my studio space, um, I don't necessarily always have a plan or an idea. I just love art materials. I love experimenting with things. Um, and a lot of times I let, um, like my time with my personal time, uh, Bible reading or um, something that I've read um, inspire a lot of my artwork. So while uh, not all of my artwork is like religious art, it's, it's, I feel like it's inspired by the Holy Spirit because I do like to pray and I pray about my art. I pray about what I create wow. because I want it to touch people. I want it to be work that resonates with them. And then sometimes it's interesting, it's always an interesting thing for artists to, um, when you have a show or when you're showing your art, to be present, just kind of like a fly on the wall, to be able to hear the comments that yes. people say about your art. Yes. So I love hearing what people think it is or what they get out of it without knowing, hey, I'm the artist, or without knowing, hey, this is what I intended. I'm always interested to hear yes. what they've gotten out of it. And then it's interesting when I try to tell them, hey, what it really uh, was inspired by or meant. Oh. So this piece right here is called Out of the Chaos. Oh, okay. And it, there is a, a spiritual meaning to that. Um, and this is a piece mm -hmm. that originally started out um, as the, the painting was much simpler. There is an image of a bird taking flight, yes. and then there's like a figure taking flight. Yes. If you look over there, you see the person taking flight mm -hmm. and then the figure. And actually behind here, you can't see it, is an image of the dove, but a different image of the dove. Oh, okay. So, you know, the dove represents the peace. Yes. Okay, and then you've got an image of a bird taking flight. That the whole image of a bird to me and soaring or flying is like a freedom thing. Yes, exactly. And then you actually have the image of a person, which is like I'm I'm coming out of something. So when you look at my art during this time period of you know late fall, early winter, even up to sometimes now, a lot of my pieces unconsciously have a theme of resurrection or rebirth or you know, overcoming trial, coming out of trial. This piece is called um, The Color of Fire. Okay. And so, um, wow. you know, when you think of fire, you think of just even just, you know, hard times, but yet there's some beauty in fire. I started studying about fire, and I didn't realize that fire has several different colors in it. Okay. Yep. And the hotter it gets, it actually starts to turn kind of like a blue color. And so this was, I love the texture. I love experimenting. Like I said, I use different tools. I don't always use a brush, a paintbrush. This piece right here, as I said, started out as a simpler image. But then this one evolved over a series of days. 
sometimes I may go in and I may spend a set number of hours or whatever, a couple of hours, part of the day, whatever, painting uh, a painting. But then I look at it and it's like, mm, that's not quite right. It's not there yet. And so I'll come back another day. I may wait two days, three days, come back, look at it. No, oh, let me do this to it. And then I'll do something different to it. It's like, okay. And I keep working with it because there's just something inside of me. And I think, you know, when you create art, whatever it is, art, music, whatever it is, dance, I just think there's something inside of you that tells you when, hey, it's there now. It's finished. That is a finished work. Mm -hmm. And I knew and I could say to myself, when I feel like things are finished, it's good. Yes, you're very creative and talented. So, thank you. And so right here I brought, one of the things as I was painting, I realized, <laughs> I think I saw something on Facebook. I thought, okay, I am loving this abstract painting. I didn't start out as an abstract painter. I actually loved painting uh, figurative, like people, uh, mm -hmm. portraits. Um, but I took an abstract, abstract painting class last year. And okay. it just kind of kicked it off for me. Well, why not experiment with this? So I was looking on fa Facebook or online somewhere and I saw scarves and I thought, my paintings would look great on clothing or scarves. Yeah. Let me try that out. So there was a company, um, La Gal Gallerista, it is not local, it is in Canada, okay. but they create, um, they put, um, paintings and artwork on clothing, mm -hmm. on uh, scarves, on fine fabrics, and they only work with artists and like galleries and museums. So it's, it's, it is a little bit expense on the expensive side, but I'm going to tell you, when I started putting my artwork on, you know, the scarves, mm -hmm. the scarves started selling and people really love the art scarves. So this scarf mm -hmm. is based wow. off, this is the Out of the Chaos scarf. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And I actually have one of my scarves on too. This is the color of fire scarf, mm -hmm. which you can see right here. That's the color of fire. And every one of the scarves have a tag with the actual um, artwork on it. And it tells you, you know, okay. who made it, the Artsy Janine. So this is the color of fire scarf. Oh, I just love it. Yeah. Okay, Janine. So this is beautiful. I'm ready to buy everything. So would you tell our audience how they can connect with you or so they can purchase either a picture or some oh, yes. your scarves mm -hmm. or your mugs? Tell yes. us. Tell us how we can connect with you. Thank you, Linda. Um Yes, I have a website. You can find me at www.artsy, A-R-T-S-Y, Janine, J-A-Y-N-I-N-E, dot com. Um, you can, you know, reach out to me through there. Also, um, I am on um, Instagram. You can find me at Artsy Janine on Instagram. You can send me a message. Um, I also will include um, some of that information because um, I have an email address, okay. which is artsyjanine at gmail.com. Spelled the same way, A-R-T-S-Y-J-A-Y-N-I-N-E. Um, I have a phone number. I will um, make sure I pass that on if, yes. if you want to put it in show notes. Um, Do you have any events coming up here? You know what? Um, I have... I'm, I'm formulating, I'm always formulating something. I'm Love always it. coming up with something. And just yeah. yesterday, that's interesting that you said that. Just yesterday, um, I had an idea um, that um, probably October, early September, okay. I am gonna do an open studio and open up my studio and uh, my <laughs> space for, um, people that have uh, become patrons and otherwise to come in and see what I do. And so, and actually, you know, um, you know, I have some goals related to um, what I'm doing right now, some full-time goals, so. Love it. So feel free to reach out to Janine so you can purchase these wonderful items. 
Isn't she, isn't she very talented and creative? We could just see, I could just see the passion that she has in her, in her work. So feel free to reach out to Janine. And in conclusion, I would like Janine to leave us with some encouraging words or tips on sure. how you can, Jen, you can become creative also. I'd be happy to do that, Linda. All right. So what I brought with me today, this is one of my ideas, <laughs> to right. encourage everyone to find their creative side. And this is also one of my products that's on my uh, Redbubble oh, shop. Okay. So that was an, one other thing. You can find me on redbubble.com. Just look up Artsy Janine. Okay. So this is one of my bags, but I want to encourage everybody, whether you think you're an, a visual artist or not, okay. get some kind of bag that you can keep in your car, that you can carry with you, and invest. It doesn't take much. You can invest in a pad, a drawing pad, oh. a drawing slash painting pad. Okay. I'm gonna put some of these. I really want to show you some of these things. Okay. You know, you can get your own paint set, and uh -huh. it really doesn't take much. You can find these things a lot of times at the dollar store okay. or one of the local discount stores. Okay. Some paint brushes. You know, okay. everybody likes to play. Uh -huh. Don't just remember, just play. Okay. Take some time to play. So I encourage oh, you, nice. you know, pencils. And now this is the time to get all of this because school supplies are on sale right okay. now. You know, yes. you don't have to be an artist to buy these things and just play. Right. And so okay. I want to encourage you just to play. Also, um, take time, go to creative events. Okay. You know, attend, go to the museum. Okay. Go mm -hmm. to uh, theater, go to, listen to good music. A mm -hmm. lot of times you can find inspiration from just listening to good music, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I just want to encourage you, there is a creative side I feel like in everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone might not be a visual artist, but there's some way I can guarantee you okay. that you have a creative side in you is just learning how to tap into that. What is that? Right. Is it you like to dance? Is it music? Mm -hmm. You know, and you're never too old. And one of the things that I do encourage everybody to do, I am a believer in personal development. Even though I have mm -hmm. my degree in studio art, I'm always looking for a way to hone my skills and increase. So why not try class? Take a class. Don't be afraid to do that. And there are a lot of affordable options even with that. I mean, I yeah. took abstract painting for less than $100 through Raytown oh, nice. Community Education. I mean, I'm sure there's something in everyone's local area. Okay. You know, so. That sounds great. So, yes. Oh, thank you so much for being on Linda's Real Deal Talk Show and sharing your wonderful art and your life and your passion. And I'm thank inspired. You. I'm encouraged. I'm looking forward to buying me a bag full of goodies. And I'm looking forward to play. Are you ready to pr play? Are you ready to bring out that creative side and style in you? You can do it. And I invite you to stay tuned for some more entertaining episodes with the Linda's Real Deal talk show. And in the meantime, stay real.